Thank you so much, Chair Harrison. Well, we have a special guest who has joined us, Governor Gretchen Whitmer, who is fighting every single day. Uh, and we're so excited to welcome the governor to the call. So we'll kick it over to you, Governor Whitmer. All right, well, thank you. I'm so glad to be here with all of you. And I love joining this spirited conversation because we gotta be spirited, right? We've gotta bring the heat as we go into this next this next election year. If, I mean, it's just been a, a wild time. And I'm so grateful for Chairman Harrison's leadership and all of your help as we navigate what certainly were unusual circumstances. So I'll just quickly tell you a little bit about what's happening here. And I'm looking forward to maybe a few questions on at the end. But, you know, in 2018, I ran on the kitchen table issues and things like improving public education, skills training opportunities, protecting and expanding health care, cleaning up our water and environment. You all know about the Flint water crisis, right? That was one of the things that that you know compelled me to run. And of course, I'm known for saying, let's fix the damn roads. But staying laser focused on these fundamentals, getting things done that make a difference in people's lives right now. That's what I ran on and that's what I'm still focused on. Obviously 2020 turned everything upside down. In 2020, we were tested. Oh, we faced a recession, a 500 year flooding event here in Michigan, a racial reckoning across the country, around the globe, not to mention the incredibly divisive election. And each of these events alone would have made for an extraordinary year. But these defining moments all happened against the backdrop of a global pandemic that swept the world. And all of a sudden there was a new fundamental we had to focus on that was COVID-19. Facing these colliding crises, my team and the people of my state stepped up. You know, we had a job to do. Every aspect of our lives changed, but we acted quickly and we focused on the data and we led with the science and listened to medical experts. Amidst the lack of a national strategy was governors and representatives who stood up, right? Stepped up for the people as there was a lot of confusion about how to stay safe our essential healthcare workers and frontline workers, they served heroically, helping the rest of us keep our lights on and our fridges full and our families healthy. So in the face of all these challenges, uh, we banded together individuals as businesses, we banded together. Even as the deadly virus kept us apart, we pulled together in really remarkable ways. We dealt with a pandemic, we saved lives and helped our economy recover quickly made a lot of progress on the fundamentals that I ran on. And we created 11,000 new auto jobs, good paying union auto jobs. We established a couple of skills, uh, upskilling opportunities, the Michigan Reconnect and Futures for Frontliners, which is free tuition, education for our skills training for people. We made the largest investment in education in my state's history. And we are fixing those damn roads and repairing water infrastructure. So we're building our economy back better, as the president likes to say, and we're delivering for Michiganders. And I'm really proud of what we've accomplished. But it certainly has come with, with a heavy, heavy job, right? As I think about 2022, I'm feeling pretty optimistic. And we've been tested, but we are tough. And President Biden and Vice President Harris, they embody values we can be proud of, right? Competence, decency. And you know what? They are refreshingly boring. I mean that as a joke, but what I mean by that is I'm not looking at Twitter every second of the day worried that some tweet is going to screw up trade um, and, and business in my state. So while so much is profoundly better, there's no question that the campaign ahead is going to be challenged, Chall incredibly challenging. We are facing a radicalized Republican Party built on, on lies big and small. The GOP here in Michigan and dozens of other states and D.C. is hell bent on restricting civil rights to win, instead of running on tangible ideas or policies, they're loyal to a twice impeached, two-time loser of the popular vote, whose disastrous leadership allowed COVID to run free, killing hundreds of thousands of people in our country and weakening us on the world stage. And if they win, they're gonna use their power to sidestep democracy and pass a really extremist agenda so we're already here in Michigan dealing with an onslaught of attacks every day. The GOP and a lot of allied groups are mobilizing and obstructing us, 
trying to obstruct us at every turn. Because of the decisive actions that I took to save lives, I became known as that woman in Michigan. And I now have a big target on my back, even though I'll probably uh, take gifts when people send them to me because we turn their, their, um, their, their attack into our armor. The Trump admit their organization is descending on my state and they're paired with the DeVos Freedom Fund. Yep, that DeVos, she is a Michigander and Betsy DeVos's family is the single biggest funder of the Republican party in my state. We're also up against Enbridge, a Canadian pipeline company, and we're seeing their attacks every day too. The RGA has already dropped half a million dollars here in Michigan, and Enbridge has dropped another 800,000. So it's a, it's a, they're mad that I wanna shut down a pipeline that's going through our Great Lakes that is a ticking time bomb and way past their expiration date. So we're up against a lot, right? Uh, millions in dark money too. So. Unfortunately, we also know that Rana Romney, Jamie's counterpart, is a Michigander herself and has even herself talked about running, although I don't think she's actually going to do that. But it just tells me and, and hopefully all of you that this is going to be a place where there's we got a big, a, a big challenge on our hands. So they're attacking us and, and all the Democrats in Michigan uh, without a statewide federal race in 2022. I'm going to be the face of their opposition and all the attacks are going to be sent my way. We have an important story to tell the world though. We Democrats are the party of action. We fought to keep people safe. We put shots in arms, money in people's pockets and we're getting people back to work. The Biden American Rescue Plan and other forthcoming elements of the Biden agenda, it's real change for communities across Michigan and across our country. Not a single Republican even supported it. Their priority is fealty to one person. Uh, the Michigan GOP is already telling people that they're going to get around my veto of voter um, anti-voter bills and go straight to um, a ballot. And so we have to fight these anti-democratic efforts and slow them down at every term. But despite the odds, I know we can win this by doing what we always do, focusing on the fundamentals, making meaningful change in people's lives right now. I need your help. I can take the hits coming my way. And heck, I've taken a lot worse recently. And I, but I know we can beat them at the ballot box. As a candidate in 2022, I'm gonna stay laser focused on the things everyone needs. A good place to live and raise a family, schools to send their kids to, clean air and lakes, and thousands across our states to the great ones in between, safe roads and good affordable health care. We wanna make a difference in people's lives right now and together, we are doing that and we will continue to. Fantastic. Well, thank you so much for your remarks. We have a few minutes left, so we'll do one question quickly from Kyle in Frederick, Maryland, who said, I'm really excited to see that Democrats are not slowing down. And I'm so worried if we don't slow down, that we'll lose the local and federal seats we've gained in these past four years. So what do you think is the most important thing that we should focus on right now so we can keep our momentum our momentum going? Well, Kyle, I would say pay attention and stay engaged. I think the last few years have shown us the power and the stakes of midterm elections, and that's a good thing. We know that we have to do the work every election. It's exhausting, but it is essential, especially as the Republican Party radicalizes and adopts suppression and anti-democratic posturing as a party platform. These governor's races across the country are really important. We saw that in 2020. Governors were on the front lines of fighting COVID and keeping people safe and democratic governors did. We saved a lot of lives. We also rebuilt the blue wall. And that's why I think it's so important that we are in, very engaged in 2022 because what happens in this next cycle will determine what happens in the next presidential. So. Um, I think that's the most important thing that we can do. Fantastic. 